Hello everyone, my name is Winona, grateful believer in Jesus Christ, grateful for the victory that he has brought to me in my life over drug addiction, and now he is just bringing victories every day as I continue my walk with him in my recovery. Amen. So before we get started, I have a great devotion for you. Um, and the scripture reading was awesome. But before we get started, let me just open this up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word, for your guidance through your word, Father God. And we just pray that it touches our hearts every time we read it. Father, I just pray for blessings on those watching this video. Bless their families also. In your son's name. Amen. Today's devotion, I always, you know, I get my devotions from the Life Recovery Devotional, my little dog-eared re recovery devotional book. And the reading is out of Romans 13, and the devotion is based on Romans 13, verses 5 and 6. But as I was reading those, I thought, ah, let me just read this chapter, and I am so blessed that I did. Now, we're not exactly sure who wrote Hebrews. Uh, you know, they're saying that it... it I mean, what did it say in my book here? It says, um, Paul, Luke, Barnabas, Apollos, Silas, Philip, Priscilla, and others have been suggested because the name of the author is not given in the biblical text itself. So we're not 100% sure who wrote this. But they're saying that, you know, in this, he talks about his brother, Timothy. So it could be Paul. could be Luke. We don't, we don't know. But when I read 13... It just opened up my heart. It's just kind of a recap of the of the chapter or, or of the book of Hebrews. But I would just love to challenge you, encourage you today when you open up your scripture for your devotion time and your and your Bible reading, read Hebrews 13, the chapter. It's not long. And you will be so blessed by those words. Amen. So let me read the, the verses that this devotion is based on. And I'll read the devotion. It's based on 13, chapter 13 of Hebrews, verses 5 and 6. And it goes like this. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And I, you know, and I love that encouragement, you know, because he has promised us numerous times in scripture that he will never leave you. He will not forsake you. And so that's why we can say with confidence, boldness, courageousness, that he is my helper. I won't be afraid. So this is what it says um, in my study Bible about these two verses. How can we learn to be content? Strive to live with less rather than desiring more. Give away out of your abundance rather than accumulating more. Relish what you have rather than resent what you're missing. Doesn't that make sense? Relish what you have rather than resent what you're missing. We become content when we realize that God's sufficiency for our needs He's going to provide you everything you need. Now, there's a difference between your need and your want. Amen? Christians who become materialistic are saying by their actions that God doesn't take care of them. When they're worried about this and that and they need more and more and more, they're not putting full trust, I think, in God. Not to say that they aren't trusting in God, but they're thinking that maybe um, at least that he won't take care of them the way they want. All right, that, that makes sense. Let me read that sentence again. Christians who become materialistic are saying by their actions that God can't take care of them, or at least that he won't take care of them the way they want. Insecurity can lead to the love of money, whether we are rich or poor. The only antidote is to trust God to meet all of our needs. See God's love expressed in what he has provided. And remember that money and possessions will soon pass away. That's, you know, definitely. You know, and then it suggests to read Philippians 4.11 for more on contentment. How to be content with what you have. And 1 John 2.17 for the futility of earthly desires. You know, because God does, he provides everything that we need. We know this. We know this to be true. I just closed my Bible and there's one more thing I wanted to read. Let me just open this back up and then we're going to read the, um, the devotion itself. Let me get back to 13. 
and 13 is the last chapter of the book of Hebrews. Okay, so I'm going to read the devotion. Like I said, it's out of the Life Recovery Devotional. And today's um, devotion is called Overcoming Envy. A major part of recovery deals with our tendency to create and live in a fantasy world. We escape the painful realities of our lives momentarily and trade them in for experiences that feel good. The pathway that leads to our addiction is paid with desires for the things, relationships, and experiences that we see in the life of others and don't have ourselves. One of the lesser known Ten Commandments says, you must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. Now, you're going to find that because that's from the Ten Commandments. You're going to find that in Exodus 20 and uh, verse 17 and also in Deuteronomy 5 verse 21 for that one commandment. Jesus also warned, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured on how much you own. And that's from Luke 12, 15. The writer of Hebrews says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will not abandon you. Again, it's Hebrews 13, and you'll find that in verse 5. Modern society and commercial advertising are designed to breed discontentment. This is, the th this is a threat to our recovery because it leads us into an emotional fantasy world. We need to make an inventory of the greed and covetous, covetness, covetousness, ah, covetousness <laughs> lodged in our hearts and our minds. Then we must treat these problems like a poison that will hurt us if allowed to remain in our lives. Remember that that greed and the covet, the coveting of what your neighbors have is gonna, it's 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 a poison. And if you allow it to stay in your in your life. It's going to destroy you. It's going to hurt you. Definitely. Definitely. So since only God can meet all of our true needs, true contentment can only be found in him. Amen. So we just have to remember that God's going to meet all those needs that we have. Amen. So I just want to finish off again in Hebrews. I want to read um, just a little bit more at the very end, the benediction and the final greetings that he, that the, that the, author gives because I love this and I want to end with this. Now may the, pe the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May grace and peace be with you all. So you guys have a great day today. Go outside and enjoy. I know here in Southern California, it's an absolutely beautiful spring day. So get out there and enjoy this day that the Lord has made.